Welcome to this video conference coverage program highlighting key data on multi-cancer early detection presented at the 2024 American Association for Cancer Research Annual Meeting in San Diego, California. The 2024 American Society of Clinical Oncology Annual Meeting in Chicago, Illinois and the 2024 National Comprehensive Cancer Network Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. In this series of six chapters, our experts, internal medicine physician Richard Whittington and oncologist Gautam Agarwal will discuss the most recent data on MSED tests presented at these oncology conferences, including clinical trial data, real-world experience, and post hoc analyses from previous clinical trials, modeled benefits of MSED test usage, novel tests in development, and the impact of MSED screening on quality of life and health and screening disparities. Welcome to Gautam Argawal, a urological oncologist and director of Precision Medicine Program for Mercy in St. Louis. Welcome, Dr. Agarwal. Thanks very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Let's discuss, to start with, cancer, cancer screening, and associated disparities that may have an impact on an individual's quality of life. I'll pass it on to you, Dr. Agarwal. So in this first study by Consell et al., they looked at this was presented uh, initially at the NCCN conference. The title of the abstracts, Working in Cancer, the Impact of Cancer Diagnosis and Treatment on Employment, Presenteeism, and Productivity. They found that among those that were working, most of the patients experienced at least one issue that impacted their work and productivity. Impacts vary depending on the cancer stage and whether the patient experienced a delay in visiting a doctor. Stage one patients were more likely to experience no impact to their work. That's about 34% of the patients. While stage three and four patients and caregivers were significantly more likely to say that cancer had a large effect on productivity or completely prevented them from working. The conclusion from this study was that diagnosis at an earlier stage may minimize the impact of cancer on working for patients and caregivers. In this next study that was presented at ASCO by Raz et al., they looked at MSED testing and whole body MRI testing. Is it feasible and was it associated with decreased cancer worry at six months? A conclusion from this was that 85% of people who were associated with this study of those N equals 100 somewhat or strongly agreed that study participation reduced their cancer worry. In another study done by, at ASCO by Patrick et al., that looked at the impact of negative cancer screening results on patient reported outcomes and behavioral intentions. They found that a negative cancer signal detected result may be associated with positive cancer screening and intentions and may positively impact psychological health. So having a negative cancer screening result on patients, it does not result in harm because they found that it actually does not lead to complacency or reduced uptake with regular guidelines recommended screening. Another interesting study by Kong et al. that was presented at ASCO looked at the perceptions of multi-cancer early detection screening tests among underrepresented populations. What they found was that regardless of income or race or ethnicity, nearly all participants, 96 to 98% of people, viewed a no cancer signal detected result as somewhat or very valuable and anticipated maintaining or improving health behaviors. These behaviors of improving their lifestyle included exercising, seeking health-related educational materials, eating healthy, receiving vaccines, maintaining or increasing adherence to recommended cancer screenings, and attending doctor's visits. The next study that was also presented at ASCO by Samimi et al. It looked at the perceptions of non-disclosure of results in clinical trial designs for multi-cancer early detection tests. In general, primary care providers and laypersons had generally positive reactions to a trial to investigate diagnostic performance, pathways, and outcomes of MSED tests. But both groups expressed concerns with a trial design in which patients in the control arm would not receive their MSED test result. Participants preferred an alternative design involving delayed testing of stored blood samples after trial completion in the control group. 
Another study by Schroll et al. presented at ASCO looked at perspectives on clinical adoption, barriers to blood-based cancer detection across stakeholders. The findings showed that it can help build an understanding of the anticipated barriers and inform strategies to alleviate them and build a foundation for clinical adoption of MSED tests. This also looked at health equity and MSED screening. We looked at a study by Nagesh et al. presented at ASCO, health equity and multi-cancer early detection, looking at a literature review and content analysis. What this revealed was that health equity themes mostly arose across cancer screening evaluation phases of clinical feasibility, effectiveness, and implementation. No records explored health equity themes of acceptability, access, or bias in the product design phase. So we need to have increasing consideration of health equity across all phases of the screening life cycle if we're going to have health equity advanced by MSEDs. Wilt et al. presented at AACR a study looking at medical mistrust and access to cancer preventative care. This study examined the relationship between medical mistrust and access to care among black, American Indian, and white participants in Virginia. They found that medical mistrust was significantly higher among black and American Indian participants compared to whites, but this was not associated with accessing medical care. So very interesting. So to try to bring these all together um, from the primary care perspective, I think it's exciting that we have so much new information being added in all the time. Certainly multiple cancer early detection tests can improve patient outcomes and overall reduce anxiety about cancer. Its use has the potential to lead us towards positive health behavioral changes. And um, it's exciting to know that our researchers are out there designing trials that are working on solving health equ equity issues, medical mistrust, and making sure trial designs are appropriate so that patients respect the outcomes. I think that that's a great conclusion. You know, two other take-home points that we can have the audience look at are there's a future study that is being designed with health equity in mind, a REACH study that will effectively have a requirement to have 20% of underserved people participate. They'll get a free test with that and the counseling associated with that and, and diagnostic resolution. And then, you know, myself, I published a study in JAMA Oncology with two other authors looking at how liquid biopsies in general may help reduce the barriers to getting screened when you're screening for multiple cancers, especially in higher risk populations, in those that have been uh, historically uh, at risk for cancer, including those with nuclear waste sites like Coldwater Creek in St. Louis and other areas that have higher risks for cancer in general.